Hey guys, my name is Kaushik and welcome back to Let Code. In this video, we are going to learn about the two major concepts that is wait for Angular and also wait for Angular enabled. First thing, can we automate any non-Angular website using Protector? Yes, 100% we can do that. But for that, we have to do some configuration. For example, this godaddy.com is built on top of React framework. It is not Angular. Of course, it is not a non-Angular website. So I'm just going to take, copy this URL and I'll just paste in my uh, browser.get and if I try to execute this now, it's actually going to give us error says that Angular is not found. Protector always looks for the Angular elements or the Angular components, but if it is not there, of course, it will not treat the page as an angular and the test script will get failed. But of course we can run that using this command called browser.wait for angular enabled equal to false. So if I show you the exception, you can see that it says angular could not found and also it's suggesting us that if your application is not angular, you have to turn off the waiting for angular. So here we can say like await and then followed by browser and then I can say wait for angular enable equal to false. So Angular application is a single page application. The page doesn't get reloaded each and every time. Rather, some of the components within the page gets reloaded. So that is what the HTTP and the timeouts means here. And Protector can handle all those stuff very easily, but of course not all the cases. For example, in our expected conditions video, three of the videos we have learned where we have to go with the explicit weight as well, right? So same things happen here as well. Of course, we can automate any of the non-Angular website, but of course we have to make the Angular HTTP or the timeout to set it off. So for that, we have to use this wait for Angular enable equal to false. Now, if I try to execute this, of course, it's going to work. There will not be any problem. But in real time, what happens, you might have a application that is non-Angular and from there, you have to navigate to your Angular website. And at that point, of course, we have to again re-enable the wait for Angular enabled so that it will take the protector core functions like the waiting for auto wait for the elements or this changes on the DOM and all those stuff. Once I'm in the GoDaddy and after that, I just want to open my website called litcode.in. So browser.get and here we'll pass this litcode URL. And of course, litcode is developed on top of Angular. 10, the latest and greatest version of Angular. And if I try to just paste the URL and if I try to execute, of course it's going to work, but I want to take the protector advantage. So before getting into the Angular website, I'll just again toggle the wait for Angular enable here. So here I'll say wait for Angular enable and here I'll set the value as true, okay? So this is the only thing you have to remember. It's very simple. If you have a non-Angular website, you have to just use the false and if the site is angular just set it as true but we no need to set this explicitly all that time if your first application that means you are going to uh, open the angular website for the first time that's not needed but if you are trying to switch from non-angular to angular then you have to use it okay now if you wanted to know in the runtime what's the value of this this wait for angular enable is set it set it as false or true you can just log it. So here if I select await and then I can say browser dot um, wait for angular enable and don't pass any of the values, any of the boolean values and just try to log this. That will give you whether the angular enable is set as true or false. So if I try to execute this now. And here you can see that we are able to get the value as true because of course in here we have set the value as true, right? But what is what is going to be the default value is it's also true. So if I try to print the same on the first line, very first line, and if I try to execute this, So here we can see that the value is true and here also the value is true. That's okay, fine. But actually this is not the real-time scenario. Um, there are few 
other things also we have to understand okay so for example i'm just going to uh, bring one more application called service now so i'm just going to comment this here so this is our service now application and this application is built on top of AngularJS, the oldest version of Angular. So now it's not AngularJS, it's just Angular that is completely designed with the TypeScript. But this is the very first version of AngularJS, I believe, which is written on the JS. So what we are trying to achieve is basically to just to do the login stuff here. So I can just load the URL. And of course, we know that this is our Angular website. So I no need to use this wait for Angular enabled to false as well, right? But that is not the case here. Let me show you. So here I can say like await browser dot get and then I'm just going to pass my URL and we're going to inspect this element. So I'm just going to use the latex path. So it has a user underscore name, which is unique ID here. And I want to do the send case. So I just copy this code and paste over here. And of course, await. And I already have a JSON file where I have stored the entire data. So if you see here, probably this one. So this file has all the username and password and each and everything. So I'm just going to uh, use this. So require and then const data. So we have stored this in a variable. So I have a detailed video on how to write and read the data from JSON or to the JSON. So just check it out. Data.url and then not the URL, sorry. So data.name. Uh, I mean user and this should be data dot url okay. and then of course we wanted to inspect on this um, password so here we have user underscore password let me just copy this and paste over here and here i want to send data dot pass that's it Okay, and also I wanted to click on this login button. So let's just quickly inspect this. And here it has the ID and I want to perform the click action. So let me copy and here we'll say await and then followed by paste. Okay, cool. So here we are able to load the website and we are trying to do some of the login form, right? So we are trying to uh, enter the username, password and click on this button. But the thing here is it is actually the center form is within the uh, frame here. So here you can see that this is in the frame and this page only consists of um, one frame. So let me search it, yeah. So here you can see that one of one, that means of course the page has only one frame. So here I have to say, as soon as I load the website, I have to say await, then got by browser dot um, switch to frame. And then I will just pass the index as zero. That's it, right? Now, if I try to execute this, let's see what happens. So the browser has launched and the URL also loaded. And then it closed because we got some failure. So let us see what was that. And here you can see that it is giving us error while waiting for protector to sync with the page. Both AngularJS test stability and Angular test stability are undefined. So it says that this could be either because of because this is non-Angular page or because you test involves client-side navigation. So what is meant by client-side navigation? So this is actually open bug in protector and the ticket was closed, but I couldn't find any of the solution for it i mean there is a solution but not um, like the appropriate solution i believe so let us understand why this is happening so by default protector cannot interact if the page if the first page has a frame and we have to switch to the frame and we have to do some of the stuff so even though it's angular application we have to treat this kind of scenario as a non-angular website so when i say await and browser dot wait for angular enable equal to false now this application is going to be treated as non-angular website and of course it is going to work that's fine that's uh, we got the solution but when i logged in and if i go to the core the application and of course i have to do some of the task and i have to make sure that angular is also going to kick in so the protector can make use of it right so for that, of course, we have to re-enable the wait for Angular. 
So I believe you got the idea how to use this wait for angular enable equal to false or the true. And also we understand one of the real time problem that if the first page or the landing page has any client side uh, navigations, protector cannot handle those stuff. So of course we have to make the wait for angular enable equal to false so that we will treat the application as non angular and then we will do all this stuff. But of course, when I do the click on and after that, it's going to take me to the next page where I wanted to wait for the angular and angular elements to be load. So for that, I can use this await and then I can say like browser dot wait for angular and that's it. So this is um, this wait for angular and the wait for angular enable are not same. They are different. So this function is going to actually instruct the web driver to wait until Angular has finished rendering and has no outstanding HTTP or the timeout calls before moving to the next line. So we have treat this application as non-Angular and then once the stuff, once the login is done, then of course after that whatever the things we are going to do, of course we wanted to treat them as a Angular. So for that we have to use this wait for Angular. But it is not necessary we have to use this command for each and every time that is not the case here but sometimes when we do the wait for angular enable equal to false then of course we have to use, make use of it i hope you got the concept and of course just to answer in simple manner of course we can automate any of the application angular or non-angular or react or whatever the javascript or whatever the framework you say of course we can automate that using protector just we have to do some changes on the script that's it. I hope you got the entire idea and hope you have enjoyed the video. If, if so, do let me know in the comments and if you have any queries, please feel free to reach out to me on the comments. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Peace out.